Blackmagic Cloud is not just about storing your project files anymore. It can actually store your footage. But the problem is that we shoot lots and lots of footage, right? And cloud storage is expensive. So today I'm gonna to show you my proxy only workflow, meaning we only send proxies to the cloud and work with those, but are still able to deliver with our full quality, full resolution originals for the best quality output. And I'm gonna show you it with the brand new Blackmagic iPhone camera app, but the principle applies to pretty much anything else. And we're doing it all inside of DaVinci Resolve 18.6. Per usual, everything in here is chapter marks so you can skip ahead, but chapter one's gonna be about how do you set up your cloud project library so you can sync to anything, including the iPhone camera app. Chapter two is gonna be about how do you conform it with the originals when you're all done, your edit is finished. And chapter three is gonna be proxy math. You've heard of boy math, girl math, dog math. Well, we're talking about proxy math so you can figure out how much cloud storage do you actually probably need. After you or someone has shared with you a Blackmagic cloud library, they start around $15 in the US for 500 gigabytes, you need to create a job folder on your hard drive. And I use uh, an Apple script that I created that draws out my folders every time, and then I can just come in here and basically paste the name of the job folder, I click OK, and you just say, where does it want to be stored? I want it to be going into Projects 2024. And it draw, you see it draws out all those folders for me. So that's an important thing for anything in post. Keep all your assets for one project and one folder. It makes it so much easier to manage. Now, the reason I did this first is because I can also take this and copy the job name to create the project as I open up DaVinci Resolve. You might need to sign in here first, just if you, this is your first time doing it, you just put your credentials and you're basically connected. And you have to be connected to the internet. That is one, it should be obvious thing, but cloud projects, cloud libraries, you have to be connected to the internet. Our project name is gonna be the exact same as our folder here. It's today's date, the 10th of January. And the first thing you'll take a look at here is we have choose location for your project media. Choose location for your project media is a little deceiving because it's not exactly what you think it might be. It's kind of like a cache location for files that other people have uploaded and you're downloading. You can change this location. By default, I think it's set to an internal drive. I have this set to um, this big Apple drive, which is a Samsung T7. And so what this means is it's creating its own folder structure of aliases for stuff that is stored somewhere else on your own system. But for other people, it's actually pulling down their actual media so that you can all work seamlessly together. So, you know, my suggestion here is make a, I made a Blackmagic cloud storage folder on my big Apple Samsung T7. And you can see here, this is an alias file for this original file. There's actually no media there. It's just pointing to the actual other media um, because it's on my own system. It's not making a duplicate taking up extra storage, which is great. So um, the next thing you have here is, um, do we want to make this, have collaboration, of course we do. We wanna say allow multiple people at the same time. That's the awesome thing about this. And then we have sync proxies only. This is key to keeping your storage requirements down really low. And we do wanna allow remote camera access. That would be for things like the iPhone. Um, there's other Blackmagic cameras they're building software for. I'm sure there's gonna be a bigger thing in the future um, that allows you to record directly into the project. I'll show you how that gets set up. We hit create. And before you do anything else, I wanna set up one thing that is really important and is often overlooked. But in the lower right, we have a project setting and then the Blackmagic tab here. Automatically, you probably should turn this off if you wanna control what's happening on your system. There is a checkbox that is called Generate Proxies Automatically. I'm gonna deselect this because I wanna be in control of when proxies are made in my cloud projects. And for the conform workflow I'm showing today, it's really essential. So uncheck that and you can leave the rest of it alone. Just make sure you have sync proxies only checked. If you needed to change this later on, you could, but again, proxies only, it's good. Hit save. And now next up, I'm gonna show you how to configure the phone so you can see how this all happens in real time with the right settings. In the lower right, you can click to change your settings, obviously. And the codec we're gonna be using is H.265. That's what I suggest, unless you have the new Apple iPhone 15, that's the way to go, 4K is good, Rec. 709 color. There's not a lot of benefit to HLG, but time code display, time code's important to me. Time of day time code is great because you can see gaps in the timeline of when you stop shooting if you need to. 
Now, if we go down from here, we have monitor. Under monitor, there's a setting in here called display upload status. There's an on and off. I like to have that on because then you'll know when your proxies have been uploaded. Now, how do we make sure we're only uploading proxies to the cloud to save space? Well, that's under the media tab. If I go to the media tab, upload clips, make sure proxies only is checked. And then the other thing here is save clips too. I like this set to in-app as long as you have some decent iPhone storage. And the reason I have it set to in-app only on here is because of chapter two, I'm gonna show you the best way to get these files, the full res files off your phone to your computer to conform. Now, the last thing we need to do on this settings page is Blackmagic Cloud at the bottom there and make sure you have allowed your project that you created in DaVinci Resolve over here you know, on the computer Make sure you've allowed that with remote camera access. That's this button down here. If you didn't do this originally, you can go and add it with these buttons down here at the bottom, but make sure remote cloud access is available. And then on the app, you should be able to toggle that on. We have 240110 there is available. Now, how do we actually record to it? You think by default, it's gonna write those files to that project because the checkbox is there, but there's actually one more step. You need to go to the media tab, which is this guy over here. And with this selected, you're gonna choose your Blackmagic Cloud project. You select that, and now it's basically, see that little camera icon right there, right there? That's basically saying when you shoot, it's automatically uploading proxies to that project for you without you doing anything else. A lot of people are like, I don't wanna use this Blackmagic camera app. It doesn't do automatic, it's, it's tricky. It uses my last settings and stuff like that. Well, let me show you how to get it in full automatic because Phones should be convenient in my mind, and they should be on automatic mode. Otherwise, just use your big boy camera. You know what I mean? So to get this in all automatic mode, you can see right here, I had shutter set to 180 degrees because that's what filmmakers do, right? And we're going to actually change this to full automatic mode with this plus minus exposure compensation button. I'm going to tap that, and then there's an auto button at the top there. If you take a look right up there, tap that. And we're in full automatic mode, full white balance, full ISO, shutter speed, all that. And so let's start filming. We're going to push record. You can get a picture of my ATEM that I'm recording through right now. That's a stop right there. And as soon as I stop, you'll see in the lower right, oh, it went so fast I couldn't even get my cursor there. This is our upload status that appears for a moment there on the right of how long that takes to appear. Now, if we take a look over here in Resolve, this is all happening real time. Camera uploads folder just appeared in this project that we created. And if I click into it, we have a folder there, or we have a file there that is exactly the file that I just shot. If I double click it, you can load it into the source and you can see there's a new cloud sync. If you right click there, a cloud sync tab, you can see to see if the files have come across. So that's just one file. Why don't we do three and then I'll show you how to conform these and get them off the phone. Let's get a little shot here of my audio interface. Just did a video on that last week. Stop. You can see on the right side there, it shows it uploading to the cloud. And very soon, while I'm recording the next one, it's probably gonna load into my project. Here's the Blackmagic Mini Color Panel, which is a great uh, piece of hardware. I'll push stop. So we've done three shots right there, and they've all, before I can even show you, that has uploaded from the phone. And very shortly, we should see that appear in this DaVinci Resolve project. Again, this is all real time. That's why I hooked this up and why I did it locally. And you can see the implications of this. If you're shooting at a trade show or some sort of live event where you wanna have an editor, maybe even in another state, editing these things as you're shooting, they can do that with proxies only. And then I'll show you, let's do a quick little edit. I'll show you how to connect it back to the original footage. Now let's create a simulated edit really quick. In the project under master, let's just create a new bin. We'll call this remote editor and inside a remote editor we'll make a new timeline create a new timeline we'll call this rough cut okay a quick way to drag everything to your timeline you could just select them all and pull them down easy enough but i do want to show you an extra little shortcut here for editing and rearranging clips when they're on the timeline that's one of my favorites let's put these in price order okay so we have three items here let's say we want this one at the beginning well, there's a command, it's called, um, basically it shuffles the clips around and it's command shift, comma, and period. So I think on Windows, it, it might be control shift, comma. So I'm gonna hold command shift. Uh, the comma key goes to the left because it's at the left of the period. And we just shuffled that so that it moved to the left side. 
The second most expensive piece of equipment uh, it is in the right order, but maybe we want to end on that for whatever reason. You can shuffle that way. The other thing you can do is you can select multiples of these and shuffle them so we have command shift to shuffle those before and after. So let's say our remote editor is done editing and it's coming back to us to do final finishing. We have our footage still on our phone. How do we get it off? That's up next. The fastest way to get your original files from the Blackmagic camera app to your computer is using files, the files app on the phone, and AirDrop. <laughs> AirDrop is faster than these USB 2 cables, so that's why I suggest it. Open the files app, go to on my iPhone because we stored it in this specific folder, there is a Blackmagic cam app that was created and under media, now we have the option to batch select files. In the upper right, there's this little three dot menu that's right up here. We'll select that and you have a select button you can choose. And now you can choose, the, let's, this is the last three files. We just wanna transfer those, one, two, three. How do we share it? Well, it's the typical Apple share sheet sort of thing. In the bottom left, click the share button. And once you do that, you have the option for AirDrop. And the idea with AirDrop, it's five gigahertz speeds. It's faster than USB 2, believe it or not, this is not the fastest way to do it. You click your device and then you'll see they've already been sent. Now, where are they on the computer? They've been placed in the downloads folder. I'm gonna lasso to select them, Command C to copy them. And I wanna paste them into the project folder that should really be storing all my footage for the project. So I have this uh, this project folder here. I've got a footage folder. Let's paste right into there with Command V. What I like to do then is bring those into the project. Uh, there's lots of ways to do that. I'm gonna suggest that you create a brand new bin over here. Click on master first. You've, if you don't do that, you're not gonna be able to do that. And click new bin. And we're gonna call this one, we have camera uploads. We could just call this one originals, something like that. And now, before you do this, this is really, really important. Make sure you disable to create proxies automatically like I talked about at the beginning. My favorite way to bring stuff into Resolve is just to drag from the Finder window into this area. If you bring to this side, it doesn't create folders and bins automatically. I already created a bin called Originals, so we're good right there. Now, these files right here are the original clips. They are full, if you look at the right side, full 3840 by 2160 and there's no proxies attached. The next thing I suggest you do is you color code those clips so you can see them change when you conform with them. There's lots of ways to color code, but one way would be to just select them all, right click, and then you have clip color. We'll make these orange. High res ones, the 4K ones that are not the proxies are orange, right? You can see that as well if you click this tab right here, there's a little tiny orange indicator there on that clip. Now, how do we conform with these? How do we get this original rough cut you can see over here full resolution first thing we're going to do is go to our remote editor bin and let's say he's done he, he's done working we're going to change this to list view so you can see this easier we're going to duplicate the sequence to make an online a conformed version of this cut um, i have this map to option d but it's not a default thing so you have to go customize it but if you right click on a timeline you say duplicate timeline and this is a really important thing. You can have lots and lots of timelines in DaVinci Resolve. You're not stuck to one timeline per project. In fact, a lot of the projects I work on, there could be as many as a thousand because there's so many iterations of ideas that we're representing. A, a timeline is an idea. Okay, so now that we've duplicated this, this is not the rough cut anymore. This is the online finish master really done last one. Um, final. Now, obviously you should version with version 01, 02, 03, but you get the idea. To conform or to replace all the proxy clips with their full res masters on this online finished master one, make sure it's selected. It's double clicked so you can see this up over here because we want to leave our, our proxy only one alone. And then the next thing you need to do is you need to select all the clips in the timeline. You could drag to select them, but if it's a really big timeline, you could also select down here and hit command A as well. And we need to right click on any one of them and choose this option that says conform lock enabled. We wanna get rid of our conform lock. Now, as soon as you turn that conform lock off, you see in here, we have a red indicator. And what this red indicator is, it's a basically it's a warning in saying, hey, this project, it's got two clips that have the same time code in it. And if you double click it, it shows you the option for the other clip. 
Now, one thing I could do is I could select this and I could hit change. And just like that, we've conformed to the other clip. But if you have a big project with lots of cuts, I wouldn't do it this way because this takes a lot of time. There's a better, faster way. I'm gonna Command Z that change that I just did. And I'm gonna show you a, a way to sort of AB your offline and online. And that would be to actually turn off your link selection so that we are only selecting our video clips. And then I'm gonna hold Option and Shift to make a copy right above them, okay? And on these ones, I'm gonna be changing over to the original master clips. And I'm not doing it by clicking the conform link button here. What I'm gonna do is actually go up to the bin in the upper right. And if you right click on the bin, there's an option if you go to timelines, reconform from bins. This is such a powerful button. I use it all the time. I even have it mapped to option R because I do it all day long. Reconform from bins. This basically gives you lots and lots of options to reconnect matching timecode media to things you've selected or all the clips in the timeline. I like to control things. I'm a control guy. I choose selected clips. And then over here, I'm gonna uncheck this and I'm gonna point it to a very specific bin. I'm gonna point it to the originals bin. Makes sense, right? As soon as I do this, pretty much most of the time I'm leaving the rest of these settings alone and I'm just doing this based off of the timecode. Uh, I click okay. And we have our top stack here is all the 4K footage that is on our hard drive. How cool is that? So now we have the originals on a timeline, but it's actually not 4K. And it's not 4K because I actually recommend you edit and do everything at 1080 until the last step. So let's change it to 4K so it can get that full quality output. Here's how you do that. Right click on your timeline, go to timeline settings. And under timeline settings, my project by default was set to 1920 by 1080. This gives you the best editing experience on any computer. Click this use project settings button and then timeline resolution. You can change this now to 3840 by 2160. Click okay. And now all of a sudden your timeline is set to 4K so that your output will be 4K. You don't wanna go straight to deliver page, choose 4K here without changing your timeline resolution because then you're just upscaling 1080. You're not actually using 4K footage on the output. And we can take a look at what the online version is versus the offline. If you hit D, if I turn this off, you can see the compression there on the off button <laughs> versus on. It, it gets a little bit better. Now, the big benefit is not necessarily the compression, but it's the resolution. So the proxies are made at 1080p. The original footage is 4K. Or if I take a look at this image right here of the volt, if I kill this or disable it by turning it on and off, there is the proxy underneath. You can see it's softer. And here's our sharper 4K version of that same clip. This proxy workflow works regardless if you're shooting with phone footage or some really nice high resolution glass so that you can return to the original files later on in the conform. Now, how do you decide how much storage you need in the cloud? So in early 2024, right now it costs about $15 for 500 gigabytes of cloud storage from Blackmagic Cloud. Again, this might change whenever. And the point of this section is once you know the data rate of your footage is you know how much storage you need for how many hours of footage. So here's how the math works. So your storage needs are actually determined by your data rate, right? And Blackmagic proxy files, the ones we're using here, are six megabits with a lower B per second. We wanna get those to megabytes per second so we can do some math here. So there's eight bits in a byte. So what we can do is divide by eight and that gives us 0.75 mega big B per second. Now I wanna figure out how many megabytes per second or gigabytes per second and convert that to hours. So to do that, we just need to multiply by 60 a couple times. So to convert megabytes per second to megabytes per minute, we multiply by 60 because there's 60 seconds in a minute. So you just take 0.75 times 60, and that gives us 45 megabytes per minute, okay? Well, how many minutes are an hour? We just multiply by 60 again. So we have 45 times 60, so now we're looking at 2,700 megabytes per hour, right? Well, that's great, but when I'm thinking about video, I'm thinking about gigabytes, terabytes sometimes, not megabytes. So to convert this further, we know that there's 1,000 megabytes in a gigabyte. So we'll take that last number, the 2,700, 
which is our megabytes per hour, and we'll divide that by 1,000. That's pretty easy. That gives us 2.7, because we can drop the zero, and that is gonna be gigabytes per hour. Well, we know that a 500 gigabyte plan of Blackmagic is kind of the lowest you can really start with. I mean, there's lower, but that's for testing. So let's just take our 500 gigabytes of Blackmagic cloud storage and divide that by 2.7 gigabytes per hour of footage. And what that gives us is actually a whopping about 185 hours of footage. 185 hours of footage. Did you hear that? If you commit to doing a proxy only workflow and keeping your original masters local, you can record for a very long time, even using the lowest Blackmagic Cloud plan. Hey, I was just about to hit publish, but I realized there's another video that just came out from Ripple Training on a very similar topic. So I wanna show you how he conforms using the relink method instead. Over in Resolve, let's flip it back over to here. We have these clips that were brought in. Let's assume we hadn't brought in our others in a separate bin to do the reconform process, the traditional process. Well, up in the right, there's this proxy switch, right? You can choose between originals and proxies. I've taught about this a bunch before, but if you hit disable proxies, they turn red. And if you come over here, there's no way to say, relink the original source media. However, what you can do is you can go to the relink button right here, point it directly to where those files are, and so they're in this proxy only project in footage and I just hid those away so I could show them go offline. It finds them and when it goes to find them, it's actually relinking to the source media and using the prefer proxies and disable proxy switch. So this is just another way of, of dealing with it. I will say they both have their place. So when I'm doing a typical conform, I'm actually working with much shorter clips, so not the same duration. And when you do relinks inside of you know, DaVinci Resolve, the clips actually have to be the exact same length for them to link up, as far as I know. Whereas if you do a conform, you just have to have matching time code. And because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in that next video.